Sometimes you're playing a video game and you notice something that makes you stop and think to yourself, wait a minute, what's going on here? And these aren't glitches or bugs or anything like that, just things that don't really make any sense. That's why today we're going to be going over 11 things that just don't really make any sense in SCP Containment Breach. First up, at the beginning of the game, you're being escorted out of your prison chamber for your first assignment in the SCP Foundation, entering a staring contest with the average League of Legends player. That's straight doo-doo on the floor, by the way. He must be at least plat 3. But after the lights go out and you lose your AD carry and jungler to a fed Hanzo main, it's just you and the lonely boy one-on-one. -on -one. Then the lights go out again and he seems to have somehow teleported to the second floor of this room to attack this guy, busted down this railing here somehow, and then teleported into and through this vent in the middle of the ceiling? What? How did he get up there? And if he can tear off the cover of this thing so easily in the ceiling, why didn't he just go through the door here? That doesn't even make any sense. And then what's worse is you see him in the very next room anyway. <laughs> What, what in the world is going on? Well, if you've played Containment Breach at all, you'd know the objective of the game is to escape the facility. But let's think about the layout of this facility here for a bit. You start off in light containment, where all of the easy-to-contain SCPs are located. You have to make your way through heavy containment, and then through the entrance zone offices before you can finally escape. But why is heavy containment closer to the entrance of the facility than light containment? Shouldn't they be switched around so you can put all of the worst SCPs way farther into the facility? And how come SCP-173 is in light containment? A statue that moves at insane speeds and can cause horrific chaos if he breaks out is considered a minimum risk? While the Windows 98 computer is in heavy containment? Like, I get that SCP-079 is much eviler than 173, but he's a computer. He has no legs. Why does he have two blast doors to get to him and SCP-173 3 has won. And for most people playing the game, you'll eventually find yourself in the storage room in the early game where a bunch of SCP-939s are roaming. But how did the 939s get to the basement so fast? Seriously, the place is infested with them and they are in no other parts of the facility. Were they led down there? Did they take the elevators down? Their containment cells weren't down here, nor would that even make any sense, so what gives? Well, throughout the game, you find terminals across the facility that let you piece together what happened to this place that caused the containment breach. In short, one Dr. Maynard and a security agent Skinner both conspired to act a little too silly for their own good and initiate a containment breach on the facility the game takes place in, presumably working with the Chaos Insurgency, a group of radical gamers bent on performing epic trollings on the SCP Foundation. Shortly before the game occurs, security agent Skinner releases SCP-106 from his containment to distract everybody Buddy, while Dr. Maynard goes to SCP-079's room to give him full control of the facility's systems to perform some funny memes and take revenge on the facility personnel that imprisoned him. SCP-106 then gets recontained and nothing much happens for the rest of the day until the game officially starts and by the time SCP-173 escapes containment, SCP-079 releases every other SCP from their containment. I mention all this because I'm curious, what is SCP-079? nine's plan exactly. If SCP-079 tries to get Peanut to kill you by opening the doors for him, why does he then team up with you halfway through the game and then still tries to get SCP-173 to kill you by opening the doors for it? If you're on SCP-079's side, I feel like he would do just about anything to help you as much as possible, including locking doors so SCP-173 and 049 can't get to you, opening doors for you and maybe even recontinuing 106 by itself, at least for the time being, so he can't go after you. Man, SCP-079 is a terrible teammate. And during the containment breach, why does SCP-079 seem to release every SCP except for 035. He released the Eric Yarn and the Teddy Bear, but no, the mask guy, he's totally off limits. With the way 035 talks about wanting to leave the facility, he and 079 could have worked together instead of having 079 use you. But does that mean SCP-079 knows of your anomalous abilities as the player? 
Oh yeah, let me explain that. In one of the endings of Containment Breach, if you help SCP-079 and escape through Gate A after having recontained SCP-106, you get captured by MTF and Foundation forces. Part of this ending is finding out that the character you're playing as, D-9341, is actually anomalous in nature. The game mechanic of us being able to reload saves and retry parts of the game we failed at is actually explained in the lore as an ability we seem to have. So SCP-079 must have known we were anomalous before the events of the containment breach even occurred, right? I mean, it doesn't really make sense how he would know that, but he was planning on teaming up with us from the start. He had to, unless its plan was literally to just commit a funny gamer meme and release every SCP in the facility and find out what happens next. It specifically does not want to work with SCP-035, and SCP it is more than able to communicate and work with. It's a supercomputer. Come on, what's its plan? Too much is contradictory to know what he's trying to do. And one of the other endings for the game shows SCP-682, the hard-to-kill lizard, breaking out of containment and wreaking havoc on all of the mobile task force on the surface. But my question is, how did he break out of containment? I mean, I know SCP-079 probably helped him get out, but he's underground. Does his containment chamber just have a giant door in the ceiling that can open and that he can crawl out of? Surely that's the biggest security risk known to man, right? Like, even if it is normally locked, why would the Foundation ever install any door that's big enough for SCP-682 to crawl out of? It's not like he's a dog that needs to go on walks or anything. It literally makes no sense. During the player's time in heavy containment, we run into SCP-106's containment chamber. When we first see SCP-106's containment chamber, it is already up in the air and a D-boy is already inside of it ready to act as unwilling bait for our goopy boy. But as we explained earlier, SCP-079 had released SCP-106 during the site-wide containment breach, which involves lowering the giant cube to the ground for 106 to walk through it. Does that mean he escaped beforehand again? again and the foundation was getting ready to recapture him again when the breach occurred? Or do they have a D-boy just chilling in that box there 24-7 for situations like this? And then why is the cube in the air again? Does that mean SCP-079 released 106 and then raised his cell again? And as you progress through the later part of the game in Entrance Zone, you make your way through the cafeteria and find SCP-294. But why isn't 294 in a containment cell. It's the only SCP object that isn't contained in any way regardless of the containment breach. And why is it in the cafeteria? Someone just installed it here. Also, this whole Tesla gate in completely random hallways that only ever affect stupid employees or one single Uzi dude strategy that the facility uses really is absolutely nonsensical. As evidence, they are only ever effective against stupid employees or one single Uzi dude. Why don't they place them near checkpoints or rooms worth protecting? Like, oh, I don't know, the exits? And why are there signs and advertisements for the SCP Foundation inside the offices for the SCP Foundation? Certainly, this is useless advertising, right? Actually, why would there be any advertising anywhere for this ultra-secret organization? In fact, why do they even have a logo? Do employees have business cards? Do they go to business conventions and go to company meet and greets? Man, this is the most self-centered secret cabal that controls the world that I've ever seen. Now, viewers of my previous video in this series also know that I harassed SCP Secret Lab for only having one bathroom, and this game also commits that cardinal sin. How come in this entire facility, there's only one place for all of the staff to use the restroom? And why do people who work in light containment have to walk all the way from their desk through heavy containment through a a bunch of Tesla gates, maybe get lost in an infinite hallway for a bit, only to finally get to the bathroom. And what's even worse, one of the toilets is anomalous and will talk to you and threatens to- Dear God, who allowed this to be installed here? And if you want to watch that previous video, check it out here after subscribing. In the last few days, the channel has been absolutely exploding in terms of subscribers and viewers. And while I just like making videos, I must admit, it's really dopamine injecting to see big number get bigger. And I'm so glad you guys all like the crazy content I put out.
Thank you so much.